All right, then. Welcome, everyone, to a, um, uh, uh, a fabulous, uh, fantastic Friday uh, lecture uh, for discrete mathematics. Um, so I, I just want to uh, give you an update on the theorem list we have. The theorem list has been updated to cover uh, where we are so far. Uh, the only thing missing from the theorem list is now uh, relations, which we will introduce today, and I'll add those in uh, uh, shortly. Um, some people find the amount of theorems and, and things to be a bit daunting, so I've also produced this uh, uh, informal uh, theorem sheet. Uh, the difference between the two is that the informal one doesn't have the calc check names. So the informal one is, is a bit shorter uh, because all of propositional logic is squeezed in right here. This is like all of chapter three, and and uh, so it's a bit a bit tight. Uh, but but it's to get the point across rather than anything else. So I'll uh, I'll add on to it uh, in time. All right. So I just made it really quickly right now before lecture. Uh, so it's so some of the uh, things are a bit ugly, uh, but uh, hopefully it's it's useful if some people find. Uh, looking at stuff over here a bit daunting. So uh, conjunction has a billion theorems right here, and over here conjunction is summarized very, very quickly with just the major theorems given to you. Okay, ducks. Um, if you have any uh, uh, suggestions or improvements about um, uh, about either theorem lists, please uh, let us know. Uh, <laughs> thanks for the haircut. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Uh, here, I'll uh, post the link right now before I forget. Here it's, here's this one. And the other one uh, is right here. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll clean them up in time and I can uh, perhaps then make a formal announcement once once they've been cleaned up. Uh, but, but I thought they might be useful now to some of you uh, before they, they get cleaned up. Um, if, if you want me to expand anywhere, please let me know and I can change things or expand them or, or whatever. Um, anyhow, thank you very much. Let's uh, let's return to the uh, uh, topic we left at yesterday. Um, <clears throat> maybe maybe I'll do smaller slides actually. Let me use smaller slides. <sighs> okay. So uh, uh, as always, I do have the uh, I do have the chat open in front of me in case uh, in case uh, anyone has any questions, concerns, or queries. So please feel free to uh, ask as always. Thank you, Dex. So uh, yesterday we, we talked about the universe. And uh, when we started talking about some of the examples for the universe, it was a bit, uh, everything was in the subscript. Uh, so today we're going to use a different notation just to avoid that. So uh, yesterday we had uh, subscript u. Uh, so today let's just use brackets, uh, these floor brackets, just so that way not a lot of stuff is squeezed into the into the subscript. So yesterday we had uh, bold face U subscript B. Uh, today we'll just have floor uh, these corner brackets B. Okay, just just to make the examples easier to read and, and not so small. That's all. Um, so so you don't really need to uh, use subscript anywhere, but just just as an abbreviation. Okay, so so you can read these square brackets if you like as uh, type as set because we're we're treating the type as a set. Okay, Um Sorry, let me uh, let me open up a uh, a playground so we can try some stuff out as always. So let's uh, where's my handy dandy playground? This. <clears throat> so yesterday we we talked about uh, a set complement. So we'll we'll continue from there before we get into the new topic today. Okay. So for set complement, we were asking. Uh, we were asking what is the appropriate type for it, and uh, we we came up with the idea that the that set complement takes uh, takes uh, sets to sets, right? Just as negation takes uh, numbers to numbers, okay? And that always depends implicitly on some ambient universe, okay? So this is the idea of of using the corner brackets. Uh, before we had these expressions as subscripts set B or set of set B. So now by using corner brackets, it's a bit easier. Okay, but just in case anyone's worried, let me just make a note of that. Uh, corner 
tau slash r r corner. Oh, slash r corner. Ah. Ah. Uh, this is just a way to view types as sets, i.e. Sorry, Professor, I don't think you're sharing the uh, calc check slides. I'm sorry? Uh, it doesn't look like you're sharing the calc check slides or the uh, calc check screen. Oh, you don't see it. Oh, that's. Uh, thank you for letting me know. That's unfortunate. Let's uh, let's fix that. Uh, right. Do you see everything now? Nope. No. Oh, shucks, golly, goodness gracious. I guess this means we are at the uh, end of time. Uh, how about now? Is now a thing? Looks Do you good. all see this? You see this stuff? All right, great. I, all right, so I, I just wanted to mention what, what uh, that's all. So just a, a nice uh, way to talk about these things, okay? So yesterday we left off uh, when we said, uh, uh, you know, negation of numbers uh, work takes a number to a number, and likewise complement takes a set to a set. And so that's the type we assigned it down here, okay? So there are two levels right now. There's, there's sets, which are like, you know, other data, like numbers or other things, and then there's types, which constrain your data. OK, so just just uh, want to continue there. Would the power set of the universe of the booleans be the same as just the universe of the booleans? Uh, so Iman asks, uh, Iman asks the following question. Uh, Iman asks, Iman says, would a power set of the booleans uh, be equal to a set of the booleans, right? Um, uh, in, in brackets, uh, brackets, uh, should, uh, in brackets, is this the case? Yeah. Uh, no, since the left hand side is, is a set, is a set, uh, uh, sorry, uh, this, this is, this is true. This is, this is yes, this is true. Uh, if you were instead to say, like this equals just set of B, then the answer is no. No. Left hand side is a set, right hand right hand side is a type. Uh, quality needs quality works on the same kind of things only. Okay. So a uh, good question, Iman. All right. So when so brackets let you view uh, a type as a set, and so this this is this is correct. This is uh, not correct. Okay, so we'll we'll get to that in a moment. Actually, that's a that's a good observation. So we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, so I, I know I'm I've beaten eleven point two five. You know, like like a dead horse. I keep, you know, smashing it in. Uh, but I just really want you to be comfortable with the fact that sets really are just you know uh, propositions. There's um, there's some people. Uh, uh, there's some uh, professionals who think uh, we shouldn't even use sets altogether, that we should just always work with uh, predicate logic and propositions. So, the, so there are some people who really advocate just, you know, uh, just use propositions. They're the same. By, by 1125, uh, they're really the same. So why bother? Um, other people like the idea of, oh, a set is a collection. It's a packaged up form of a proposition. And, and so some people like to do it that way. Uh, um, but really, it's it's like saying, take two random people on different sides of the world, and, and then they'll come up with the same idea, uh, but from different perspectives. Uh, you know, uh, I say uh, I say potato, you say potato, right? It, it's it's the same thing at the end. Um, you can, we can, but we were allowed to have both because you know, we have different preferences, um, and, and you will likely see sets going forward in mathematics and in computing, but but they really are the same. Um, anyhow, so now now uh, that was a quick review of what we've done with sets and then the fact that I want to use these brackets today. Um, so we're going to get into Cartesian products. So yesterday we, we had this uh, uh, theorem about products and we gave an example, but we didn't actually get time to talk about products. So I'm hoping we can talk about them today. Um, 
so a, a product, uh, a product that is like, uh, it, it, uh, it can be thought of as a theory for nested loops, if, if you're interested. Um, and, and here, the example right here shows when you have one set and another set to form their product means to consider all possible pairs from each of the sets, right? So I want a one and I want something from here and something from there, right? I want all possible pairs, right? And then here's all possible pairs, okay? Uh, so this is very useful uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, programming when you have, for example, uh, multiple loops going, right? If you have a loop over index i and a loop over index j, then you're really considering all possible uh, pairs, right? Um, sometimes you can nest them, but otherwise you're having simultaneous. Okay, so the idea is I have I'm I'm accessing the data uh, simultaneously. Okay, so uh, let's let's uh, look at it just briefly. So this angle bracket notation just says, hey, you know what? Uh, two two angle brackets are the same when the first thing is equal to the first and the second is equal to the second. Okay, then we define the product of two sets to just be all possible combinations BC with the first one from the first set and the second one from the second set, okay? And then it's not too difficult to, to show, hey, here's a set, here's its defining property. So this thing is inside the set precisely when it satisfies the defining property, okay? Uh, uh, products are, are really the gateway to getting to records or structures, which is uh, really, really important in, uh, in programming. So let me, just make a small, so products are essentially the theory underlying uh, records or uh, structures or um, uh, classes. Okay, so these things that you see in programming, uh, they're really just fancy uh, uh, product types. Okay, so that's what's going on here. Um, so, uh, if you have a, a record in your favorite programming language and it has two fields, uh, that's what we're referring to as the components here. Okay, so let, let me try to make that a bit clearer. Uh, then you can say I have an instance of a class. That's essentially saying I have a tuple. Uh, oh. So. A tuple like this, b comma c, is essentially having an instance of a class. Um, you can think of tuples, uh, uh, sorry, you can think of these components as the fields of a class. Right? And if you don't know what classes are or what records are, that's okay. I just wanted to mention it as a, as a, a, a in relation to programming. Okay. Uh, somebody was asking about membership right here. Okay. So this this membership relation, if you, if you recall, we just say x if we have a if we have a set S, and this is all x such that R is true, okay. Um, then then this is the same thing as then this when you say x is inside S, that's the same thing as just asking for R to be true, okay. So this was the symbol membership theorem we mentioned from uh, from last time. Symbol membership. Okay. So just if your uh, if your set is defined as a comprehension, your set is all the solutions uh, x to the problem r, then x is inside s precisely when it solves r, and then that's what we're doing right here. We're saying here's a set, and it's defined as the solutions to all of this problem. So B C is inside this precisely when it's a solution. Okay, Dux. Good question, Lynn. Alrighty. So this is why we we care about these. And then here's the uh, last part about uh, our products and why we care about them. Um, sorry. The last part about products that we care about is these so-called projections, right? Which are also known as getters, right? from object-oriented programming, okay? So, so product types really do uh, give us the underlying theory of these uh, record structures classes. Um, so in upper year classes, uh, you might take uh, 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 specifications and correctness and you'll, you'll prove more programs correct and you'll talk about arrays and 
Arrays can also be modeled as uh, records or structures. So really, product types are, are integral when you want to start talking about objects, okay, in, in your favorite programming uh, language. All right. uh, you're welcome. Uh, please continue to ask questions, okay? So, so uh, whenever we come to something and you're like, why is this useful? If I forget to mention the relationship to programming, please do uh, remind me and I will happily uh, uh, explain why we're learning this, okay? Um, so here's a few theorems about uh, about cross product. So this one we already saw a moment ago. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, this one says uh, the order doesn't really matter, right? You know, I have two two fields in my record. Uh, then that means I just swap the type of my record, and I still have the two fields. Okay. If if I wanna if if one of my fields is impossible to inhabit, there is no possible value. Then my record is going to be essentially the empty record. It's like multiplying by zero, okay? Um, if, if the order doesn't matter, then that means either the fields are the same or one of them is going to be zero, okay? So some languages like uh, uh, Scala uh, and, um, and TypeScript uh, allow, uh, allow type subty subtyping, and so these rules become very important there, okay? So different uh, languages admit different rules, okay? Uh, uh, in C, there's union types, and then as in Haskell and a few other languages, which means I want a value of this type or that type. And union types are modeled by the union operation. So we're saying if I want a field of type S, and then I want either one of T or one of U. That's the same thing as saying I want two fields uh, from S and T or two fields from S and U. Okay. So all of these laws now essentially uh, uh, become optimization or uh, re-representation laws for, for records, if, you, if you're so inclined. Uh, otherwise, they're just you know, uh, nifty properties about products. Right? So it depends on, on what you're interested in. So product distributes over union, over intersection. Uh, recall that minus is just a different form of intersection. So product distributes over that. And as you would expect of a product operation, it's order preserving. OK. So. Here's a, a little tiny proof about products. Uh, this is, um, uh, again, this time uh, up, up here we said uh, two products are the same precisely when everything inside them is the same. And we can rephrase it by saying uh, two tuples are the same when their projections are the same. Okay, so this is now a, a more record-like view. If I have two objects and two objects are the same at every possible field, then we think of them as the same. This is the uh, infamous dot equals methods in, in programming languages, right? Or uh, anyhow. So, so uh, uh, now that we got to, to uh, uh, products, the reason where we're really going here is not to talk about records and structures, uh, but so we can talk about relations, okay? So sets of products uh, are known as relations and, and they're really, really, really helpful. Um, but I'm going to pause for a breath and, and see, are there any questions? Uh, Iman, excellent. Uh, minus, it, it removes elements. It's uh, So T minus U means I want everything in T, but not the stuff inside U. Good job. Um, Risha says, what does Cartesian product actually do? So Cartesian product, what it does is form all possible pairs. So here's... Here's two sets. I have one set. I have another set. And I want to consider all possible combinations of tuples from the first one and the second one. OK, so let me let me try to make this uh, this example clearer. OK, so here is uh, products in in uh, maths. And then we can say here is records in uh, programming programming. OK, and for programming, you might say um, record record my type uh, where field X is of type um, one, one comma, two comma, three. And I have a Y, which is of type uh, four comma five. OK, uh, then you can say later. Um, my instance is of type my type, and my instance is equal to 
for example, um, it's the record value having X be uh, one and having Y be five, right? I.e., this is this is the value one comma five. Okay, so so uh, they really do let you model these this idea of records. So in a, in a in a functional programming language, we might say here's here's what I want. I have a type called my type. It has two things, x and y. X comes from here and y comes from there. That's all it is. And then I make a value of my type, and this value is just going to have x equals one, y equals five. Okay. Right. Yeah, you're welcome. No, good questions. Please, please continue asking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I say the word classes, I meant classes from programming. Yeah, yeah. Good, good catch. Alrighty. Um, before we leave uh, uh, products and, and move into relations, I, I do want to mention this cool thing. So I've I've uh, I've mentioned it before, um, but I really do want to mention it again. Uh, so it, it's uh, this is called currying, and I keep mentioning, hey, programming is proving, proving is programming, and and and. Uh, I have to take every opportunity to, to remind you programming and proving really the same thing. So here's another opportunity now that we have products in space in place. Um, whenever you have a, a function that uh, that takes uh, an input a and then it returns another function, all right, uh, then you can really consider that as a binary function. Okay, so you can say, hey, I have a function that takes two arguments and returns one value. Okay, this is known as currying and uh, really you've already seen this before as shunting right if i have an implication that uh, whose conclusion is another implication what i'm really saying is i have two assumptions uh, in my implication okay so i i just wanted to uh, mention this again and uh, higher uh, and functional programming languages uh, use currying all the time like like haskell or elm or these other languages they they do a lot of currying so uh, um, it, it reduces the amount of parentheses. So here you have G of X, Y. Here you have G with an argument in parentheses for a tuple X, Y. Right. So just, just wanted to mention that uh, flavor of life spice. Okay. Um, all right. Are there any other questions before we move on to relations? So, so I said a moment ago, a relation is just a set of products and, and uh, it's going to take a breather and, and look. Are there any, any questions, concerns, or queries about where we are so far? I'll continue waiting. Maybe somebody has a question. I go too fast sometimes. So, you know, I'm gonna, let me let me uh, give you guys uh, t time to think or, or ask a question. Am I talking to the void? Is somebody is somebody there? I think we're good. Okay. Thank you. I I wasn't sure. <laughs> I, I maybe I. Uh, all right. Thank you. All right. So we're we're we're, we're you know we uh, we we we've beaten the uh, uh, sets repeatedly. Eleven point two five is your friend. It's it's in the book, but uh you know where wherever you see um, wherever you see uh, union, you know, just just think or right and likewise. Intersection, you can just think and. Um, when you see uh, complementation, you can think not. Uh, you see universe, just think true. Uh, you see empty set, think false. So 11.25 is is just you know brilliant, just, just fantastic theorem. Okay, so nothing nothing too daunting. Um, but please do do the practice and and. Uh, we'll we'll move on to relations, and and relations are just sets, just just you know. So that's what this big thing is, right? So now we're looking at a specific kind of set. Uh, uh, we're looking at sets of pairs. Okay, so we're we're still doing set theory. Everything from set theory still applies, uh, and now we're just gonna look at sets of pairs. Okay, that, that's all. N nothing too too complicated. And the reason we want to talk about relations, uh, so just in case somebody's worried. Uh, the reason we want to talk about relations is because they give us non-deterministic 
uh, computations, i.e. they model computers, right? computer processes. OK, so when, when you when you run a program, right? And uh, if it's Monday, your program will return this. If it's Tuesday, your program will return that. So it's not deterministic. Uh, whereas a function uh, always returns the same value on the on the same inputs. OK, so if, if I run uh, my function uh, on uh, Monday at 2 p.m. and then I run it next week also on Monday at 2 p.m., it's going to give the same result. But if it's non-deterministic, right, then it, uh, it might change the result. Right? Even if I run at the same time, I, I run it once, then I run it run again, and it changes differently. So that's what non-deterministic means. And, then, and that's very useful to model computations, and that's what relations are. Okay? So there are languages that work with relations, such as Prolog, uh, for example. Um, for example, Prolog. Right? So this language works entirely with relations. Right? Um, another one is Alloy. Okay, so these ones like the idea of relations so much that they only use uh, relations. Cool, cool stuff. Alrighty. So uh, a relation is just uh, is just a subset of the Cartesian product. That, that's all it is. All right. Um, which means it's a set of pairs. All right. So so nothing nothing uh, uh, strange. Um, so. We're, we're going to use this notation, this double-headed arrow, to refer to relations, and you'll see that in the homeworks and the exercises. Okay, And all this means is we have a set of pairs, where the first one comes from T1, and the second one comes from T2. Okay, Now, this is, this is a type, and of course, sometimes we're interested in the set version, and so we'll have this one. Okay, So th this is the important symbol to pay attention to. In this whole slide, this is the thing to pay attention to. This is how we refer to as relations, OK? So here is an example relation. Right? Consider the uh, the set of all possible people, right? So there's Bob, Jill, Jane, Tom, Mary, Joe, and Jack. Then we have a parent of relation, right? So Jill is the parent of Bob. Uh, Jane is the parent of Jack. Uh, Tom is the parent of Bob. And Tom is the parent of Jane. Okay, so Tom is the parent of Bob right here. So we can think of that as uh, right there. Okay, and and Tom is also the parent of Jane. So right here. Okay, so these two relationships can be modeled using this graph. Okay, so we have two right here, and we can think of them as right there and also right here. Okay, ducks. Another way to model relations uh, besides sets of pairs is, is graphs. A third way that people from uh, really like is to use matrices. Okay, so here's a matrix, and uh, everywhere that the matrix is on, that means that those things are in relation. So here's Tom and Bob. So what I would say is here's Tom and Bob. This one is on. Okay, but Tom is not the parent of Mary. And so this one is off. OK, so off, off, off. Only the first two right here for Tom are on, because Tom is the parent of Bob and Jane only. OK, so there's uh, relations are just everywhere. And so there's a lot of different ways to, to present relations, either via graphs or sets of pairs or matrices. So I think the next assignment will have you uh, maybe uh, working with that a little bit. Uh, yes, KMAP vibes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, usually it's, it's a bit annoying sometimes to say Jill, comma, Bob is inside the set parent of. And so what we'll say is we'll say, hey, Jill is related via the relation parent of to Bob. This is this is this is easier to read. Jill is a parent of Bob. Okay. So that's what these. Uh, Tortoise brackets let us do, right? They're, they're shaped like a tortoise, okay? And they let us have this readable infix notation, okay? Whereas this one is a bit awkward to read, okay? Both are fine, they're the same. Syntactic sugar, abbreviation, reflexivity of equals. Okay, uh, uh Yes, the order of a relation matters. Uh, Tom is the parent of Bob, 
but it would be very unfortunate to think Bob is the parent of Tom, right? Like, um, I I love I love this book, but does this book love me? I would have a very sad life if that was the case. Right? So so relationships are not always symmetric. Alrighty. So uh, another and uh, as I said, you can think of relationships as graphs, and really graph theory, simple graph theory is relations, right? So, so uh, that's pretty cool. Simple graph theory is relations. That, 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 that's all it is, right? So a, a graph consists of a, bunch of a bunch of dots in space, right? Here's a dot, here's a dot, here's a dot, and then some lines between these dots. Here's a line, here's a line, here's a line, and this dot, this dot is forever alone. It's not connected to any of the other dots, okay? So you have a bunch of dots and you draw lines between them. That's called a simple graph. Um, uh, when the relation, uh, when the uh, when the edges uh, form a relation, okay. So this is called a simple graph, and and simple graphs really are just relations, right? Just, that, that, that's that's great. So there's a whole class called Math uh, 3G03, I think, or something like that, called graph theory, and and then, and it's just about graphs and graphs are just relations. Uh, simple graphs are just relations. So um, it's that whole, do I have sets or do I have propositions? Do I have potatoes or potatoes? It's, you know, some people really like to talk about matrices. Other people really like to talk about graphs. Other people really talk to, about relations. So it's, it's, it's nice that there's all these different uh, uh, perspectives, uh, you know, creativity, right? So uh, relations, uh, graphs, uh, matrices, right? so much fun, right? You know, you can, it's, it's like being able to, to do different uh, hobbies, right? You know, it's a good thing to do and you can pick which one you want. So uh, if, you, if you're already comfortable with matrices, uh, a lot of stuff is going to be very, very familiar. Um, if you're comfortable drawing dots on paper and lines between them, uh, things are going to be a bit uh, comfortable, right? Every algebraic formula you see will be like, hey, I know what this is. This is a graph with this property, right? It's a drawing of this shape. Uh, and, and if you already know relations, then uh, you can interpret them using these new ways. Right? So different ways to interpret stuff you've already seen. That's always nice. Okay. Uh, uh, please continue to ask questions. All right. Thank you, Dux. All right. <clears throat> so uh, these, these tortoise graphs, uh, this uh, 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 tortoise notation, you can enter it using uh, alt uh, open parentheses, or you can say slash parentheses parentheses to make it. Okay, so let uh, I have some opened up right here. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and the cool thing is because our relations are just sets, that's all they are, they're just sets, all the stuff you know about sets immediately applies. So here's a theorem called relation union. It says uh, it says A and B are related by either the relation R or the relation S to mean they're related by R or they're related by S, right? So that's that's pretty. Uh, that doesn't sound very difficult. Um, would anyone like to see a proof? Oh, excuse me. Uh, Iman would like to see a proof. So let's try to do a proof. So here's A, and then I do like that, R, union, S, then I do like that, then I do a B. Then I say like this, then I say like this, then I say like that. Okay. Now, does anybody know what the first step is? Let's try doing the first step together. So what was the, what's the first step? What did I do there? Does anybody want to tell me? What was the first step right there? Mm -hmm. uh, union does not represent and. Union represents or. Union has always represented or. Uh, uh, union, uh, as I mentioned here with 1125, union is really or. It's, it's really or, OK? Uh, it's so much ore, okay, that you can stockpile it and buy gold with it. 
Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. It's just it's just an abbreviation, and so really we're not doing anything. Flexibility of equals. All right. Good to go. Oh uh, no. Did I skip a step somewhere? Ah. Where? What did I skip that I did that? Uh, one second. So here it is, and it's just reflexivity of equivalence. That's all it is. What did we write down, guys? What did we write down? Where's our example? An example go. Why didn't this work? Definition of oh yes okay thank you. We could do that instead. Definition of this thing. Okay. So for 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 a little while we have to use definition, but then we'll unfold it to get rid of it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. What's what's the next step? Does anybody know what to do here? Thanks, uh, Ruben. What do we do next? We do union, exactly, right? Union, okay? We're just, uh, to be inside a union means you're either in the first one or in the second one, and that's exactly what we're doing, okay? What's the last piece? The last piece, exactly. Definition of Turtis brackets. Okay, so so uh, there's it, it's it's just set theory, but now we're looking at the special sets that are sets of pairs. Okay, so so nothing uh, too difficult or 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 uh, hard. We're just changing a little bit of a perspective and saying, hey, these sets of pairs are interesting, uh, so-called graphs. You know, let's let's look at those a little bit. Okay. Um, so some people were asking earlier about the relationship between the keyword set and the QM brackets. And so here's a nice summary between the two. Okay, so we uh, something is a set precisely when it's contained in the uh, uh, set of elements of type T. Okay. Thank you, Dennis. Yeah, there. Okay, so it, it, many books will just write X, R, Y. It's a very popular notation. Uh, but we're going to use tortoise brackets uh, because it's vague otherwise for, for CalcCheck to, to see these things, right? Uh, invisible notation uh, becomes explicit in programming languages, right? Uh, in math, they just say 3x, but in programming, you say 3, you know, asterisk x, because uh, multiplication is an operation and you have to write it down, okay? So uh, just as we proved this theorem, all the other theorem, everything else about sets is provable because uh, relations are just sets, right? So two relations are the same precisely when uh, uh, two things are related by R at the same time they're related by S, okay? Inclusion means if they're related by R, then they have to be related by S. Uh, union means uh, they're related by the first one or they're related by the second one, okay? And to say we're related by one or the other, all right, so just as above is to say we're related by the first or related by the second, okay? So I, I think the second notation is much better with, with tortoise brackets. I think it's easier to read, so I prefer that, and uh, I hope you do as well, but if you don't, you can always unfold and uh, use uh, use a membership, okay? And as we said before, this, this epsilon, this membership symbol, is the key insight to going back to propositional logic. That's that's what uh, Meta Theorem 11.20, uh, 11.25 says, right? Use n to get from sets, from sets to propositions. Okay, so n is really the thing that shifts us back, right? Use set comprehension to get from propositions to sets, right? If you want to go back, you can uh, use set comprehension. Okay, next. Alrighty then. So let's 
uh, let's look at a few interesting. So before we had these uh, uh, sets and they were kind of kind of a bit boring, but when you think of them as relations, uh, they take on a new life and suddenly they're a bit interesting. Um, so the empty set uh, uh, for, for uh, products is called the empty relation. And the empty relation says, nothing is ever related to anything else. Nobody is related to anyone else, right? So that's what this relation says. On the other extreme, the universal relation, remember we had that big uh, bold U for the universe. Uh, so the universal relation on a product type, right? Instead of the big bold U, we just say, it's just B times C, because that's what the big bold U would be in this case. And this says, uh, everything is related in, in, uh, in, in this relation, right? So X and Y, for X inside B and Y inside C is always going to be true, okay? So it's on the other extreme. And of course, as always, a, a complement just becomes a negation, all right? There is, however, this new one. This new one is kind of interesting. This one is called the identity relation, okay? And if you think of, of the first element of the product as the input and the second one as the output, then this one says, hey, uh, X, uh, the input X goes to is related to the output Y precisely when they're the same. There is no change. Okay, so let me let me just write that down super quick. Um, so we can say we can say x x comma y slash is an R. We can think of that to mean. Uh, R takes input X and out outputs Y. Okay, so um, for example, let R be the uh, usual less than or equal to relation on natural numbers. Then, then we have one is related via R to uh, three. And uh, one is related via R to uh, 99, okay? So this is what I meant by being non-deterministic, right? The, uh, the relationship R takes an input and returns an output, uh, but here it takes the input one and returns three, and then it takes the input one and returns 99. It can do one or the other, all right? So that's why it's non-deterministic. It never return, it doesn't always return the same thing. All right, so that's that's the really cool thing. And this is a relation, right? So we took a relation that you've seen before, and we're saying, wait a minute, if you see it this way, uh, it has multiple outputs. So that's that's a really nice feature of of non-deterministic uh, uh, computations. It models multiple outputs. Uh, it's nice for multiple multiple outputs. Okay. So uh, it would be awkward otherwise, because then if you have a function, you say, I have to return a list or a sequence of possible outputs, okay? And, and with relations, you just get rid of that awkwardness and just uh, say, hey, maybe it's uh, going to return output, maybe it's not, maybe maybe a lot, maybe none, all right? So that's the that's cool thing here. Alrighty. Um, uh, I'll stop for a moment right here and, and uh, see, is there, is there any uh, uh, questions or concerns? Yeah. We, have, we have seven more minutes. I just want to make sure I'm not uh, going too fast. You know, I get really excited about relations and, and all the assignments we've been working on to get us to relations, right? So uh, all of these operations, right, um, from the previous slide, uh, we have equality, we have orders, okay? We have joins, right, ors or unions. We have intersections or meets. So all those assignments secretly building up to relations. All right, you know, I've been telling you, oh, hey, this is just uh, numbers. This is just booleans. Oh, this is just sets. And now I'm telling you, hey, it's just relations. So really, assignment one is 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 where we're we're back at assignment one. <laughs> uh, all goes around. Uh, here's a real life example of a non-deterministic computation. I ask my computer, you know, I, I say, what time is it? And then it tells me the time. Then I ask it again, what time is it? And now there's a new time, okay? 
So that's a very useful uh, 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 thing. Or or a lot of time the computer will make use of, of how much battery life is available, and then it will change its behavior accordingly. Um, so that's another thing about non-deterministic computations. Um, another thing is, uh, what's another example of a non-deterministic computation? Um, <laughs> if you have a friend, right? You know, your friend is not always going to act the same in every situation. Your friend will act differently according to their mood, to other uh, uh, hidden factors, right? You know, uh, you're like, hey, uh, well, last time we came to the park, you had a lot of fun. Why aren't you having fun now? Why can't you be function? Why are you? Why are you a relation? You know, just, you know, stop being so non-deterministic, right? Uh, but then you wouldn't be human, and that would be sad. Okay, next. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, are, are there any other questions? Thank you, Docs. Exactly, Ivan. All these hidden factors could be considered inputs if you bring them to the top level. So this is the uh, this is an uh, an idea of functional programming to bring as much information as possible to the type level. Uh, unfortunately, in object oriented programming, a lot of these things are actually implicit. Factors. So a lot of times people write, will write a, a, a program and the program will reference the, the date, for example, um, which is which is an implicit input, right? But now it's uh, the program secretly depends on on the date. You look at the type and the type says, oh, hey, this program uh, prints hello world, but secretly it depends on the date. And every third Friday it prints hello fabulous instead of hello world. And, and that, that's not documented in the type at all because it's a hidden uh, implicit uh, input, okay? And functional programming languages like Haskell say, no, that's not allowed. Every, every input has to be in the type. If you use an input, it has to be in the type. You can't just say, oh, let me look at the time. No, you're not allowed to do that. So some languages will say, you know, this is bad. It is a lie. You know, in, in the type you say, it just prints hello world, but you're secretly using uh, uh, implicit uh, information, implicit inputs that make the program non-deterministic. So you have to declare that at the type level. So different languages have different ways of, of doing, uh, of handling that. Um, it's a pretty neat thing. Okay, good, good question, Iman. All right. You're welcome. Please, please continue to ask questions. All right. Um, so. We're, we only have three minutes, so I won't uh, uh, I won't uh, uh, rush through everything, but I just want to mention some things really quickly. Uh, so all the set operations before still work on relations, but here's a new one uh, called converse, right? And converse flips the argument around. It's like reversing a list. Remember sequences from last week? It's like reversing a sequence. So maybe. Uh, uh, I'll get out. I'll get A4 out this week, and you can look at assignment four and, and see it there. Okay. Uh, another thing is called. Remember this 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 funny operator I introduced last time in assignment three. That's building up to relations, and now we're here, and you'll you see this funny operator R and then S. And the reason I called it and then is is it will be uh, maybe tomorrow. I don't want to rush too much uh, through this. So, but uh, I'll just show you really quickly. Um, so uh, converse just changes the order, CB, now BC, right? So parent of, the converse of that is child of, right? You know, uh, I am the parent of Yusuf, Yusuf is the child of Musa, okay? So if I want to read it this way, or if I want to read it that way, that's what converse lets me do. It reverses the order of reading, okay? So I I'll get to these slides tomorrow, don't worry. I just want to show you really quickly. Uh, but but we'll come back to these tomorrow. Uh, otherwise, it would be really mean to go really quickly. And and we called this and then this operation in, in assignment three. We called it and then right. And so you read it as b is b is related via r and then s to d. Right. Uh, and remember we call we we said you can think of these as graphs, and that means uh, there is a path from B to something in the middle, some C in the middle, and then from that C, I can go to D in the other graph. Okay, so so uh, we'll get we'll get to this tomorrow, but it just it, it opens up a whole new menagerie of, of things for us, and really it's just it just sets, and sets are just propositions. 
So there's nothing new, but but this change in perspective that's, uh, from propositions to sets, sets of pairs, relations, matrices, graphs. So just a change of perspective, and and and, and we're back at assignment one of the class. So so we're we're back where we started, right? So it's it's really exciting, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, for, for the most part, we're only going to work with binary relations. Um, there is a third year class on databases that will cover uh, uh, relations in programming uh, for, for, for databases. Um, anyhow, uh, uh, since our time is up, uh, I hope you're as excited as I am about this. Uh, I'm clearly <laughs> very excited about it. So uh, I wish you all the best. Have a wonderful weekend. And uh, uh, yeah, uh, take care. Bye. All right.